Alright, so now that we added Bucky to our server, the next thing we need to do is we need to create those SSH keys for him so he can actually log in and connect to the server. So again, this is how it's going to work. Whenever you use SSH, you have two keys. One is called a public key and one is called a private key. Now, the user's public key, it goes on the server and it just stays on the server. Now, their private key, it gets stored on their own computer, their desktop, their laptop, wherever they're working from. Now, whenever they try to connect to that server, it's going to look at the private key and it's going to look at the public key and if they fit together using this special algorithm, then that user is going to have access to the server. So we're not going to be using that password that we saw in the email anymore. That's how it's going to work. And again, SSH is a little bit more complex than that, but that's the bare bone basics of it. All right. Sounds cool. So how do we make these keys? Well, check this out. There's actually a program that came with, if I can find it, putty called putty gen. So I'm going to go to start putty putty gen and this is a program to generate keys so what type do you want to generate this SSH these are just different algorithms or formulas but the one that we want to use is SSH minus 2 RSA it should be there by default and if you hit generate then it says okay this is a random key that's going to be unique to each user so in order to give it some random numbers as a seed you just move your mouse over here. I don't know, maybe write your name. Do do do. Maybe draw a picture of you know whatever. And then it says, okay, here is your random key. So again, this is the public key that you see right here. This is what we're going to be sticking on the server. So select this. Select this all and just copy it. And then eventually we're going to be pasting it into that terminal whenever we set everything up but for right now let's just go ahead and save both of these keys on our computer so whenever we close out of this you know we don't have them lost so I'm just gonna save the public key as it doesn't really matter what its name so droplet um, 01 public and you always want to save this as a text file dot txt and whenever you save your private key you usually want a password to protect it but just for this tutorial I'm just gonna skip it hit yes so these private keys they are stored as a special file a PPK file so I'm just gonna name this droplet 01 private so now I have droplet 01 public and private keys both stored on my own computer but again the only one that you really need is your private key and the public key you can just stick on the server but you know just in case I lose anything I want to have it backed up. So now that we got both our keys generated, let's just open up Putty again and add that public key to the server. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually SU, which means switch user, space minus space Bucky. So I'm going to switch from root to Bucky. And I also want to clear the screen because it's getting a little bit, you know, jumbled up. All right. So you have to put these keys in a very specific directory. In that directory, it doesn't exist on our server by default. Since this is a brand new server, it barely has any files on it. So mk dir, this means make directory. What do you want your dir directory or folder to be named? Well, dot ssh. And you have to name it this. You just can't name it anything you want. So we now have a folder called dot ssh on our server. And now what we want to do is we want to give it the proper permissions so to change the permissions that's a kind of change the permissions of a directory you ch mod and then you give it a special code 700 means that owners can read write and execute from the directory ssh and by the way anytime you're trying to edit permissions for a directory just look online at all the special codes you don't have to memorize them all so I know that this one is 700 hit enter now after this we're gonna add a file in this directory and this is where we're gonna be writing all of our keys so nano is I don't even know it's like a text editor that's built into the terminal it's the ugliest text editor you've ever seen but it's the easiest way so I'm gonna show it's not it's like worse than notepad since it's all like through your editor but whatever 
So what file do you want to open in this little text editor, if you can even call it that? SSH minus authorized underscore keys. And let me make sure that's spelled properly. Authorized, looking good. Now hit enter, and there you go. Look at this beautiful text editor we have. So all this file is going to do is it's going to store the public keys. So remember, we already copied this, this public key. So if we just paste it in using shift insert, we're only going to see the end of it because it's this long string, but the entire thing is pasted in. So once we have our data pasted in, our public key, just hit control X and that exits this. Now before we exit out of this text editor, it's saying, do you want to save the data that you just entered? Hit Y for yes, and then hit enter to confirm it. So again, whenever you made some changes, and you want to save it and then come back here control X Y and then enter alright pretty cool now the last thing we have to do is this we already set up our permissions for the directory but now we want to edit the permissions for that authorized key file and we want to do this so the owner can read and write to it so chmod this is 600 700 is if you want to execute them too 600 is just for reading and writing without executing so again, that's dot SSH authorize underscore keys and hit enter. So now we have our public key set up. So what this means is that whenever Bucky logs in, he's going to pass in his private key. It's going to look at the public key that's already in there. And if everything works out, he's going to be able to connect to the server. All right, pretty cool. So you can actually close out of this. Are you sure you want to close this session? Yep. And we can actually close out of this as well. So you may be wondering, all right, whenever I try to connect to the server, how does it know where my private key is? I know where I saved it, but how does my computer know? Well, actually, if we go back into all programs, putty, and open up this program, P-A-G-E-A-N-T, I actually already have it running, so I just got to click right click it and view keys this is your SSH private key manager so whenever it tries to connect using SSH it's gonna look here for all of the keys now we already have it generated we just gotta tell it where it is so I'm just gonna hit add key and droplet 01 private that's my private key and boom there you go now if you ever have an old one I don't know maybe you're working for a website and they went out of business and you don't need it anymore just highlight it and hit remove and it won't be there anymore but this is what this little program is now that we added it we can close out of it and check it out so now when we open up putty again no more passwords needed use droplet one that's where we want to connect load open who do we want to log in as we just want to log in as Bucky and hit enter and check it out it didn't ask us for a password it didn't ask us for a private key we are connected why didn't we need to type that in? Because it already knew what public keys were on a server and it already knew where to look for our private keys. So it did it all behind the scenes. We now have a secure, awesome connection to the server. Pretty sweet. See you next time.